Hey, everybody. Welcome to KEXP. I'm Derek Mazzoni. Uh, I do a show called Wopop. It's on every Tuesday, 7 to 10 p.m. at kxp.org. And smart speaker, mobile app. Happy New Year. Once again, it's the first in studio of the year. I've been a fan of this band, and I'm really, really stoked that they're here. Um, I've been a DJ for a long time. I love playing in clubs. I love going to clubs. I love the energy of uh, uh, what happens in a club. This band takes that to a whole other direction. And when I found out about them, when I first started hearing their music, I heard Brazil, I heard West Africa, and then I heard something really, really interesting, which to me is the sound of the future. And that's a powerful statement from everybody and for everybody in the world. I'm talking about Sophie Tucker, and I'm jazzed beyond belief that they're here right now on KEXP.
Next, we have an unreleased song called Jacare. Thank you. That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. What a gift for the new year. <laughs> Sophie Tucker and KXP. The next song is another unreleased song. It's an upcoming collab. This is our version of it. It's called Sacrifice. Do I love what I do even more than I love you? I when you're sick and hurting and when you're celebrating your night i'm an ocean away i'm a time zone and two plane flights do i love what i do even more than i love you i might will you sacrifice for me if i don't sacrifice for you
Sophie Tucker in KXP. The one last song we got is a song called Drinky. First song we ever wrote together. First song we put out.
Sophie Tucker, KEXP, you brought your A game. Thank you. That was lovely. That was absolutely Jimmy lovely. Jimmy James and Skerrick. Jimmy James and Skerrick. Justina. Representing, and Justina. Yes. Justina is our manager who is from Seattle. We've never played music with her before, but we knew she was amazing at piano. Oh, she was so awesome. So much fun. This is so, so it's such a beautiful story. So a couple of things I just need to let you know. I need to ask you, first of all, is um, that song is a huge hit. And it's the first song you wrote, first song you put out. What does that feel like when out of the gate you've got a monster? And a good monster, not like, you know, like Monsters, Inc. monster, not like, you know. It didn't feel like a monster. It was such a slow burn. Like, okay. it took years, I think, for it to feel like a lot of people knew it. Yeah, it was literally the first song we ever wrote together, and it was the first song that we ever released as Sophie Tucker. And it's just been really cool that it's, like, stood the test of time for us and for other people, obviously, it's, it's been a slow burn, and now a lot more people know it. But a lot more people. More importantly, I think Tucker and I still love it, and like so this much. is now, all of a sudden, it's taken on a new life. Like with with all of you playing it, it, it it's now a totally different song, mm -hmm. and it's still one of our favorite things ever. And the fact that that was the first thing that we ever made together is is really special. It almost felt like a blueprint for us for what Sophie Tucker was going to be because we had no idea at the time. And even like visually, like that song sounds like visually, like we created the whole sort of world that feels kind of like tropical Brazil, Amazon, but dance, but we are, you know, it, it all kind of stemmed from this song and this song gave us the, I don't know, the, the belief that we could maybe be an actual band and do that for a career. And you are. <laughs> so far, so good. I mean, you brought, you brought palm trees, you brought dancers, you brought, you brought Sophie Tucker here into the studio. And so, um, and I saw you play last night and I have to say it was just filled with joy. Um, often you see a lot of bands that they present, you know, let me feel my pain. Mm. I need you to feel my pain. <laughs> And which is fine, you know, we're talking about how much we love sad songs, but everybody was just overjoyed to be together, to see you perform. And you guys created this alchemical energy where everybody was feeling that, but there's a, a sense of discovery there. You're singing in Portuguese, you're working with, uh, you know, with poets, you're working with different musicians, you're traveling, you're bringing this thing in an environment with, with an EDM that has, uh, that I love but it tends to be a bit conservative. Once you have a hit, it's like, don't screw with it until the cows come home. You guys are evolving and playing with that. What's your, what's your um, thought process with that? How, how is it that you're, that you're not um, just playing it safe? Well, I think the reason that we do what we do, we always talk about this, like what is our big why? The reason that we do what we do is because we like making music. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if we then, you know, g get like a level of success that we're happy with and then we just try to repeat things, then we completely miss the why, which is that we like making music that makes us happy. So we do this in order to continue to make music, you know, and if that's the end goal, then we're going to always continue to create things that we're really excited by that turn us on and that, you know, maybe are, we're not expecting other people necessarily to always like them. Like that's not necessarily the point. Mm -hmm. I think the we're point hoping. is that we are our number one <laughs> fans. Like we have to stay true to that because we can't please everybody. You know, we, we can't mind read. Um, and what's important to us is that we continue loving the process of making music and you know, the music that we love and the music that we're inspired by is, is all over the place and constantly evolving and changing. Yeah. No, we love you. Go finish. Tell me. No, I was just going to say, I think part of the reason it always feels like 
we're going into new territory. We try to feel that way is because we're so different. And Sophie's been growing and evolving over the last seven years since we started Sophie Tucker, as have I. And what we listen to in our free time, or if we're both on the plane, in our headphones, it's completely different music, completely different opposite vibes. Might, one might, one might, one might say, say opposite. <laughs> with pretty much everything in our lives. <laughs> but I think that really helps because we're always bringing new things into each other's brains for for creativity and we we don't get, you know, sick of it or we you know, we don't get stuck cuz there's always someone else's input pushing it. How did these collaborations come together? How is it that you First of all, your origin story is really interesting. You were playing bossa nova, you met in, you met in school and you were making beats Two different worlds coming together. You're a jock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not. Well, I did play soccer. Okay. okay. In the back in the day. Okay. In like, no. No, no. Oh, but I was a full on nerd. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a full on nerd. I went to school to play <laughs> basketball. That was sort of my whole career and in, in life. And then I got sick and I was in bed for about seven months and I wanted to be productive but could really go get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So I did something I'd always wanted to do, which was learn how to make music on my computer and produce. I just watched YouTube and just tried to figure it out and um, really fell in love with it. And then was lucky enough to come across Sophie, who was playing acoustic bossa nova music only in Portuguese, had never held an electric guitar before. The first time she held an electric guitar was when I forced it in her hands mm -hmm. and then we wrote Drinky that day. I was like, I don't know how to do this. So I kind of like, you know, picked it. Like, I, I just didn't know. Like I, I didn't know how like to a use a pick yeah. even. So that, that's like what came out from like figuring out what an electric guitar was. But yeah, I mean, I come from jazz. I come from Bossa Nova. I lived in Brazil and I'm deeply in love with Brazil and Brazilian culture and, and the language. And um, I was, you know, I was really missing Brazil at the time. And so my way of coping with not being there anymore was writing music in Portuguese. And I had this collaboration with this Brazilian poet, Chacal, who we still work with to this day. Um, and we were, you know, he would like recite his poetry and then I would sing it back to him kind of like with my acoustic guitar and that's how that collaboration started and then you know I was playing that music when when Tucker and I met and we just I thought it was really beautiful but really slow <laughs> like you okay. guys were talking about how you love sort of sad emotional music I don't <laughs> I don't I don't do it at all and uh yeah I was like this would be really cool in dance music because I was listening to a lot of dance music from like France and places where I didn't understand the language, mm -hmm. but it was sexy and cool. And I actually liked that I didn't get caught up on lyrics. Mm -hmm. I could just like feel it. And so that was sort of where the origin started. Um, we go back a little bit, which is we met at a different time, pre-pandemic. And we've been friends for a while. And one of the things that I loved how you pivoted during the pandemic, you were looking at this, you, you're touring musicians, you can't tour, you can't travel, but you started streaming really quickly and you did it every day. Can you tell us a little bit about what was that thought process where like, we're going to connect? Because the other thing that I love about you guys is that you're really invested in your audience. You're, the way you're connecting with the audience, the way the audience was at the show, the way people love you guys, you're doing the work to make sure that the people feel like they're pretty close to you, not like, you know, you're distant. How does that process work? And what was that thought with, with uh, the pandemic? Yeah, with live streaming, we were in our house and we found out that, you know, months and months and months of touring had just been completely obliterated. And so we were kind of bored, you know, looking for something to do. Um, I mean, it takes us like two hours to be like, okay, yeah. let's do something. Um, it was the day after, I think, we found out that our whole tour was canceled. Yeah. So, so but it I was, wasn't intentional. No, I was working out in the living room. And Tucker, we had just set up our CDJs. Tucker started DJing. And um, our like person who was living at our house, who was our photographer and videographer at the time, she just started live streaming. She wasn't filming. actually even living at our She was just there for a day before we went to Ultra. <laughs> and then we were starting a big tour. And that's why she came to stay at our house. And then we all got stuck there. And... Yeah, I was just DJing for Sophie working out because she likes to listen to music when she works out and I like to DJ, so it worked perfectly. And she she randomly started live streaming on Instagram. We'd never live streamed on Instagram before. And we noticed a lot of people were showing up and liking it. 
Yeah, so we were like, okay, we'll do this again tomorrow. Same time. See you there. Right on. Yeah, and then the next day we showed up, and I did it again. And then we were like, okay, see you tomorrow, next time, uh, yeah. next day, same time. I think on the third day I said, this is so fun, and more and more people kept coming in and, and interacting with it, and I said, let's do, let's do this until we're back into the real world. I we was like, be, I am not working out on camera every single day. No way I'm DJing. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it'd be a couple weeks or like a month at most. And we we're like, we can do this once a day. It's fun. We love it. 300 days later, yeah, we're still going. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and to me, that was this really interesting metaphor to use the pandemic. If you could, you know, as long as you're staying alive, it's kind of like a chrysalis. It's like, okay, I would never do this. Why would I do this when I have this whole other journey ahead of me? That journey's end. And now I have to come up with another journey. And you guys did that. And continue to do that, even from the first one. It's like, I'm going to sing in Portuguese. I'm going to work with these different musicians and these different artists. How is this, how is this actually happening? So your, your courage, if there's another word for it, I don't know. Maybe there one is Portuguese. But it's like, um, is really... Is. <laughs> so I would call it something like faith. You know, like mm -hmm. I think for me it has to do with faith in, in following what interests you and not necessarily needing to know why it interests you or what the outcome is going to be, but just be like, this is fun for me, so, so it's important that I do it. You know, it's like, I don't know why I'm even learning Portuguese. Like, I don't, I'm not from Brazil, you know, but something in me was like, I just, I just love learning it. I love speaking it. I love it. And then, you know, it turned into so, so much of a part of my career. And the same thing with live streaming. It was like, well, we like doing it today. We like doing it tomorrow. So we really like doing mm -hmm. this. And then it just turned into something that we could have never anticipated had we tried to like, you know, plan yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. There's no way you could have manufactured the the closeness and the connection that, you know, I think, I think a lot of artists would love to, or you know, even us, we were talking about how do we feel more connected with our community before the pandemic? And, you know, you can't manufacture this type of thing, but it happened. And then we were like, oh, that's what it feels like to feel really, really close and connected. And we shared everything every day and we were all going through the same stuff. We were yeah. going through the same thing that the person who was watching in I think every continent, you know, they, at the peak of it, there was 40,000 people watching every day. I mean, it was like really something that people needed, something to keep going, something to hold them accountable to get out of bed. To You know, we needed something to put on clothes and look presentable or else we would have been slobbing around all the time. It was, it was really beneficial to us and it turned into meaningful for so many people. And I think the symbiosis of it being meaningful for us and other people is what brought us so close together. Sophie, Tucker, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having us. It was an honor. I look forward to welcoming you back again. I'm super curious to see what you're going to be making, what you're going to be creating. I know that you're touring all over the world. People love you. You're on some huge stages. And um, I'm, I'm curious to see what will come. I just want a special thanks to the legend, Jimmy James, Skerrick, and Justina Heckard. Thank you guys for joining us and making this so special. Thank you also to Bob's Dance Shop, Lucas and Cameron, who danced with us today. We love you so much. Thank you. This is KXP, 90.3 FM, all over the world at kxp.org, smart speaker, mobile app. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We're a real radio station. It's the new year, 2023. Check us out. Support us. We're listener-powered radio. And spread the word. Let them know. Thank you. Thanks for our amazing video crew and audio crew and everybody else that makes KXP happen. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.